Okay, we might have one or two join shortly, but uh, I think I'll get started then. So, um, hi, I'm Mike Moroni, a project manager with the St. Clair Region Conservation Authority. Thank you for registering to participate in the community information session this evening. The purpose of the session is to, is to uh, provide an update on the work that's underway to prepare an engineering and design plan to address the mercury contaminated sediment in the St. Clair River. The St. Clair Region Conservation Authority is leading this work with project oversight being provided by Environment and Climate Change Canada, Ministry of Environment, Conservation and Parks, and Dow Canada. The session is being held as a Zoom webinar, so with the video and audio settings turned off for the participants, but not for the panel members today. Uh, and um, the reason we're doing that is we uh, want to make sure uh, there is some uh, control over the numbers of people and, and how to deal with the Q's and A's. So I'll speak about that. So with me today to help present the information on the findings is Ed Glaza, Principal Project Manager with Parsons and Betsy Henry, Principal Scientist with Anchor QEA. And Betsy is part of the Parsons team working on preparing the engineering and design plan. They just turned their videos on there for a second so you can see them. It should take about 30 minutes to go through the presentation today, after which we would welcome any questions that you might have. If you do have questions, we ask that you submit it at the end of the presentation by clicking on the Q&A icon instead of using the chat function. So just type in your question there and then send it. Try to make your question brief. Uh, keep it to one sentence if possible. And we'll be monitoring those questions. And when they come in, we'll be directing them to the panel members. And I'll introduce who's on the panel at the end of the presentation today. Uh, the information session is being recorded today. So that can be posted to our uh, website afterwards for viewing by anyone that was not able to participate today. All right. So we'll get into the presentation then. So for the presentation today, I'll start it off by providing a bit of background information on efforts to address mercury contaminated sediment in the river and activities completed to date. Betsy Henry will be providing an overview of what the sediment management goals and remedial objectives were at the start of the project. And Ed Glaza will be speaking to the work that was completed, the results achieved and the recommended remedial approach. Then I'll be speaking again in the last few slides, including talking about the next steps. So when I'm talking about the priority areas in the St. Clair River, I was talking about priority area one, two, and three, and buried deposit one and two. Priority area one being just north of Anjanong First Nation, uh, just beside the uh, Suncourse North and South Dock area, and a portion of the Trans Delta property where their dock was located. Priority area two, just south of Anjanong First Nation near the Shell Docks, and just north of the Shell Docks where there are a number of pipelines that cross the St. Clair River. South uh, of that area is uh, in the Guthrie Park location is priority area number three, and then buried deposit just one just located north of that, and buried deposit number two south of that, and all this just located north of Stag Island. So uh, this slide, provides a summary of the work that's been completed to date. And in 2005, Dow completed the cleanup of 14,000 cubic meters of contaminated sediment along the shoreline of their property. And then in 2007, a technical team was established to develop a sediment management strategy for the mercury contaminated sediment that was present further downstream at the locations that I mentioned previously. In 2009, an assessment of these remaining areas was completed and the results showed high mercury concentrations in some areas and a risk of mercury accumulating in fish, such as the red horse sucker that feed on organisms that live in the sediment on the bottom of the river. This confirmed the need for a plan to manage the sediment. In 2013, then a sediment management 
Options Report was prepared to examine options for managing the contaminated sediment in each of the priority areas, which also included a lot of community engagement at that time. And then in 2016, a technical team was formed to review the more recent data that was available on mercury levels in fish, worms, and sediment. And the purpose being was to develop a risk-based goal for managing the contaminated sediment. And Betsy will speak a little more about that. In terms of the more recent actions, it was in December 2018 that we announced that the Conservation Authority had received funding from Environment and Climate Change Canada, Ministry of Environment, Conservation, Parks, and Dow Canada towards the development of an engineering and design plan. The purpose of such a plan is to outline in detail exactly how the sediment is to be managed to achieve the risk-based goal that was established by the technical team. We held a number of information sessions uh, between April and October 2019 to create awareness of the work that was underway. And some of you participating in this webinar today may have also participated in those information sessions. If you did, you may re recall some of the key messages at that time. We wanted the design plan to outline how the sediment could be removed by hydraulic dredging in those areas where mercury concentrations are greater than 10 milligrams per kilogram. And if access through the use of a hydraulic dredge was not possible, then we expect the use of mechanical dredging to be considered. We expect the design to show how a clean backfill material would be used to backfill those areas where contaminated sediment had been removed so that the average mercury concentration in the surface sediment in each priority area would be less than three milligrams per kilogram. And in areas where dredging could not be done, we expected that consideration would be given to the placement of a cap to cover the contamination. It was understood that the approach and design would ultimately be based on the outcome of additional sediment sampling that was to be conducted prior to preparing the plan. So it was in August 2019 then that uh, after completing a competitive procurement process, we retained Parsons Inc. to uh, prepare the engineering design plan and they were uh, able to get out in the field to start uh, doing their pre-design investigation work as they call it, uh, shortly afterwards. So they were able to uh, start it off in fall of 2019 and do some more work again in the summer of 2020 and then the fall of 2020. And the field activities they were able to complete included things like water velocity measurements and sampling of surface sediment to look at grain size. And the reason for that is they want to assess sediment stability in each of the priority areas. And they also uh, collected numerous shallow sediment samples and deep core sediment samples down to about one meter to measure mercury concentrations at the various depths. And they also did bathymetry surveys to measure sediment surface elevations in the targeted areas. Turn this over to you now, Betsy. Thanks, Mike. Um, so sediment management goals, um, these were developed in um, during the sediment management options report. And they're the goals that we've used um, both as a the technical team in 2016 and then the work that's been ongoing since then. And there were three of them. The first was to support local risk reduction. Uh, with the idea of um, identifying any risk that was present and taking action to reduce risk. The second was to limit any downstream transport of sediment that might have a higher mercury concentrations, and also to limit the re-exposure of any sediment that was buried that had high mercury concentrations. And then finally, um, where feasible, the goal was to remove or isolate as much contaminant as possible. Just referring back to the first one on the local risk, you may be wondering what local means. There was an ecological risk evaluation done uh, before the sediment management options report that found that there was no risk to organisms that live in the sediment in the priority areas. And there was no risk to wildlife that were consuming fish that were caught in the priority areas. Uh, but there was a potential risk to localized fish. So by that, we mean fish that reside in the priority areas and don't travel much. So the red horse sucker would be an example. 
and that was a risk to those fish themselves from accumulating mercury. Uh, larger fish that humans might consume have a much larger home range. That is, they travel, say, between Lake Huron and Lake St. Clair. So their exposure is throughout the whole uh, body of water there and not just the priority areas. So that's why the focus on local risk reduction. Uh, next slide, Mike. Um, based on the goals, we developed remedial objectives. And the reason for doing this is so that we have discrete, very specific objectives so that the engineering team can design the correct remedial action. So in 2016, I was part of the technical team that reviewed uh, the most recent data from the Ministry of Environment, Conservation and Parks for mercury concentrations and sediment worms and fish. And we looked at those data as well as the historical data. Uh, and from that developed a uh, cleanup goal for surface sediment that would protect these localized fish. And that goal is three milligrams per kilogram mercury in surface sediment. And it's evaluated on what we call a surface weighted average concentration basis. And the idea for that is these are fish that swim around within the priority area and over time average their exposure to worms that might live in the sediment of the priority areas. That is, the, there's not one fish that will sit in one spot its entire life and only eat worms from one spot. It's traveling around the priority area. So you'll hear Ed Glaza when he talks about uh, the findings of the design investigation, he'll be discussing the SWAC, the surface weighted average concentration. Um, based on that goal, we also took a look at all of the concentrations within the priority areas as of 2015, 2016. And we um, determined that if we targeted those areas where the mercury concentrations in surface sediment were 10 milligrams per kilogram or more, by doing that, by either removing or isolating those areas, the overall concentration, that is the surface weighted average concentration, would be three milligrams per kilogram or less. So those were the remedial objectives developed in 2016, and they're the ones that have guided the design investigation, which I'll turn this over to Ed Glaza from Parsons. Thank you, Betsy. As, as Mike mentioned earlier, um, the first step in completing a design is to make sure we have enough data to complete the design. So we completed three phases of pre-design investigations, fall of 2019 and then 2020. In the priority areas, we collected samples from 94 different locations and each sample location had multiple sample intervals, multiple sample depths and analyzed for mercury. Um, we analyzed for grain size in three sample locations. We took water velocity measurements at three different depths at each of nine locations. And we completed a bathymetric survey. A bathymetric survey is just a method for measuring the elevation of the surface of the sediment. And then in the areas that uh, Mike showed in the maps that have been referred to as the buried deposits, we collected mercury from five locations and, and analyzed um, for mercury. We did grain size analysis on samples from seven locations. We took water velocity measurements at six locations. And again, completed a bathymetric survey. Uh, the pictures there um, just show uh, Polytech was the local firm um, that we subcontracted to collect the samples in the river, and that was their sampling boat. And then the lower picture shows that uh, working around the Suncor docks, um, a lot of access restrictions there. So we actually had to place the, the, the sampling boat in the water via a, a large crane. So um, a very significant sampling effort, as you'll see on the next slide, Mike. So the, uh, these are each of the three priority areas. The black dots represent historical data that have been collected between 2001 and 2014. 
and the yellow squares represent uh, the samples that we collected in 2019 and 2020. And you can see that um, a lot of the sample locations were new and unique locations. Um, the goal of those was to better define the area and um, depth of um, mercury impacted sediments. Um, there's also a lot of them that are co-located with historical samples, uh, which we collected to allow us to do a comparison of mercury concentrations uh, under current conditions to what they were historically. Next slide, Mike. Uh, these different figures give you a representation of what the mercury concentrations are in the surface sediment in the three priority areas. Um, and the concentrations are um, certainly relatively low in comparison to the um, two numbers that Betsy talked about earlier, the three milligram per kilogram surface weighted average concentration, which is the goal as well as the 10 milligram per kilogram level, um, which had also been uh, targeted previously. Um, the color codes here, the, the three to six is uh, three to six, or excuse me, the, the light blue is three to six milligrams per kilogram. Uh, the dark blue is less than two milligrams per kilogram. So you can see um, fairly low levels of mercury. Um, also significantly, the SWACs um, taken into consideration the new data um, range from 2.3 to 2.6 in the different priority areas. And that's obviously very significant because that is less than the goal that Betsy talked about of three milligrams per kilogram. Uh, next slide, Mike. Um, when we realized uh, that the surface concentrations of mercury were lower than they were um, historically, um, we, we put more of a focus on evaluating um, natural recovery processes. And there's really multiple lines of evidence that there has been significant natural recovery out there. We'll talk each, about each of these in subsequent slides. But number one, and the most obvious, is that the concentrations of mercury in the surface sediment have decreased over time. We also see that the highest mercury concentrations are typically buried, um, which uh, in well, the bathymetric survey also shows that we have um, sediments that are continuing to deposit in these areas um, and vary the mercury concentration. And significantly, these newly settled sediments are lower in concentration uh, subsequent to the upstream removal of uh, impacted sediments by Dow in 2005. Um, another very significant point, um, and this was really just, um, I could call it luck, much of our sediment sampling in the bathymetric survey was conducted following a 100-year high river flow event in late 2019. Um, in that high flow event, that was when the potential for erosion was high. And even the sampling in the bathymetric survey after that event um, showed us that that natural recovery had occurred. So next slide, Mike. The um, bathymetric survey. Um, fortunately, we had a 2011 bathymetric survey that we could compare our 2020 bathymetric survey to. Um, and you can see um, that we did not have perfect overlap. Um, but in the areas where we did, we saw that there was significant accumulation of sediments in most areas um, since 2011. The red indicates that the current surface is 0.4 meters or more higher than it was in 2011, and the yellow indicated it's between 2.2 and 0.4 meters um, higher than it was. So you can see that um, in general, these areas um, are continuing to accumulate clean sediment over time. Next slide, Mike. Well, we also collected um, in the final round of sampling, we deliberately targeted 26 historical sample locations and we reoccupied those sample locations. Um, that gave us a basis for comparing the average concentration at those locations um, to what, uh, historically, to what they are currently. You can see historically, 
Um, the average of those 26 data points uh, sample locations was about 19 milligrams per kilogram. In 2020, that average concentration was approximately four. So a very significant decrease in surface sediment concentrations over time. Um, and that, that decrease also is reflected in the revised surface weighted average concentration calculations, um, including the data up through 2014, it ranged from 3.1 up to 4.1, um, including the data through 2020, those SWACs, as you saw previously, were 2.3 to 2.6. Next slide, Mike. Um, we also looked at um, it on a theoretical basis. Uh, which was why we had collected the water velocity measurements and also the grain size analysis, which allowed us to um, evaluate uh, and from a theoretical standpoint, would these sediments be likely to erode under the velocities that would be seen under a high flow condition in the river. And the conclusion there again was that these sediments are uh, stable and the likelihood of re-exposure of subsurface buried mercury is very unlikely. And that is obviously supported by the declining concentrations um, in the surface and the historical bathymetry results, which are showing the deposition. Next slide, Mike. In the areas designated as buried deposits, and these were areas that had been designated as buried deposits previously because it had been identified that there were higher levels of mercury that were, that were buried by significant layers of cleaner sediment. Um, we collected cores from five locations that had previously been sampled in 2014. And what we saw was that um, the, there had been additional accumulation of clean sediment in these areas since they were last sampled in 2014. You can see the, the graph in the bottom left. The vertical axis is the depth. The horizontal axis is the mercury concentration. Um, so you can see in both 2014 and 2020, the um, concentrations in the first 50 centimeters were, were close to zero or, or very low. What you also see is the 2020, which is the orange line, the maximum mercury concentration occurred at a deeper depth than it did historically, uh, which is the basis for the conclusion that there is ongoing deposition of cleaner sediment in, in these areas as well. Um, therefore, based on that evidence, um, it's concluded that the, these deposits are stable and then no further action is required for the buried deposits. Next slide, Mike. Um, so based on the uh, extensive additional data that we've collected, um, it can be concluded that there is no measurable risks presented to fish by mercury in the sediment under current conditions. And that's based on the fact that we are currently meeting the SWAC goal of three milligrams per kilogram in surface sediment in all of the priority areas in the buried deposits. Um, the concentrations have gone down significantly um, due to natural occurring processes subsequent to the remediation of the upstream sources and re-exposure of the subsurface buried mercury is very unlikely. Therefore, an erosion resistant cover um, is a recommended approach within focused areas um, of the priority areas, which will enhance um, erosion protection and further decrease mercury concentrations in surface sediment. Next slide. The erosion resistant cover will consist of a layer of fine to medium gravel. The minimum thickness um, will be 15 centimeters in order to achieve 15 centimeters every place. As a minimum, the contractor um, will place more than that on average and based on experience, um, the average thickness is likely to be about 25 centimeters. 
the gravel will be washed um, to remove the fine particles that um, reduces the amount of turbidity that is created during placement. Um, and it'll be placed in the areas with the highest mercury concentrations in the surface sediments um, to further reduce the mercury concentrations uh, as well as, the, as I said, to provide erosion resistance. Um, this is preferred over dredging. Um, number one, because it's an appropriate response based on the fact that there is no measurable risk presented under current conditions. And it avoids the, the risks and challenges associated with dredging, such as resuspension of buried uh, contamination during the dredging process. It also avoids the challenges associated with the dredged um, sediment handling, which includes wastewater treatment, staging, dewatering, transportation, and disposal of the dredged sediment. Uh, the picture is a, a picture of a typical placement operations. The contractor will have a, a a barge with a deck on it uh, with standard excavating equipment. This is fairly shallow water um, and uh, will simply um, place slowly and carefully the cover material on the bottom of the river in the designated areas. Next slide. This is the areas where the erosion resistant cover will be placed. You can see there there is a area adjacent to the Suncor active loading dock. There is one to the right, to the north, um, that is next to um, the former um, Dow facility, which is now TransAlta. Um, in prior area two, it'll be placed directly adjacent to um, the shell active loading facilities. And in, um, in prior area three, adjacent to Guthrie Park, um, there are three small areas where the, the cover will be placed. Next slide. And as you would expect, um, the placement of this clean material will further reduce the surface weighted average concentration. Um, currently, the range is 2.3 to 2.6. The um, predicted post cover surface weighted average concentration is 1.8 to 2.2. Next slide, Mike. I also want to mention briefly some of the monitoring that will be done as part of this effort. Number one, there will be water quality monitoring during placement of the cover. Um, much less concern about impacts to the surface water quality since we won't be actively disturbing the sediment. Um, but nonetheless, there will be turbidity um, criteria that will be established. And we will have real-time monitoring uh, of the turbidity downstream of the construction. Um, so that we can monitor it and also um, verify that we don't exceed the criteria. And uh, if we do see turbidity that exceeds um, uh, what is expected or is approaching those goals, operations will be modified uh, or potentially um, temporarily suspended um, as appropriate based on those results to make sure that we do comply with the surface water quality. And the goals and the monitoring details are being developed as part of the detailed design. And uh, the erosion re resistant cover itself, it will be monitored during um, and immediately following placement to verify that it was constructed consistent with the design. Um, also as part of the design, we're evaluating the potential need um, for long-term monitoring of, of the cover. Um, and I think um, that's my last slide, Mike. So it's back to you. All right, thanks, Ed. So with this remedial approach that Ed has described, we recognize the need to think about things that can happen in the future. There's always the potential for another party to need to do work along shoreline for a number of reasons. It could be to repair a dock, a walkway, repair a pipeline, or put in a new sheet pile wall, or repair an existing one, those types of things. So we wanna make sure that the erosion resistant cover is protected and prevent the resuspension of mercury contaminated sediment. At depth. We're having discussions with agencies that are normally involved in issuing permits prior to work being performed in the river to see what type of legal or administrative measures can be put in place to create awareness of the need to take additional precautions prior to performing any work in the river. And we're also having discussions with adjacent water lot owners in that regard. 
And the use of legal or administrative measures for such purposes is not uncommon in these types of uh, remedial projects. In summary then, what you've heard today from uh, this presentation is you've heard, you've heard that there's no measurable risk to fish presented by mercury in the sediment. You heard that the risk-based average concentration goal of three milligrams per kilogram of mercury in surface sediment has been met in all three priority areas, as well as the two buried deposits. And there's been significant decreases in mercury concentrations in the surface sediment compared to historical results and due to natural recovery. And that's all, all very good news. And re-exposure of subsurface buried mercury is unlikely. You heard that no actions recommended with respect to the buried deposits. And uh, it's an erosion resistant cover that's being recommended in focused areas within priority areas one, two, and three for two purposes, one being to enhance erosion protection and secondly, to decrease mercury concentrations at the surface. And the planned remedial actions uh, will achieve those sediment management goals and remedial action objectives that Betsy described uh, early on in the presentation. Then looking at next steps, we uh, were having a number of information sessions this month. We met with the Amazon First Nation Environment Committee and we're trying to uh, arrange a time to speak to the Wapala First Nation Heritage Center Committee. We uh, spoke with uh, key stakeholders today being uh, agency representatives, uh, representatives from industry and local municipalities. We had a discussion with them this morning, present this information. And this is our community information session this evening. And what we'd like to do with this session is we are recording it so that we can post it to our website afterwards. And those others that were not able to attend today can view it at their convenience and follow up by sending me any emails if they wish to, to ask questions. We're aiming to have uh, the uh, draft engineering design report submitted to us in August and then have the final report submitted in November and then um, the Conservation Authority accepting it in December. And there's great interest in the implementation stage. We're aware of that. And uh, that's really will, ha will have to be determined uh, after this report gets completed. That's the most uh, critical part right now is to get that done. And that will help support those discussions around implementation. OK, so thank you. That uh, concludes the presentation.